of all the new cars on sale, I tend to favor ones that offer cheap thrills. My box, McLarens, they all have their place in the world too. But for the majority of enthusiasts, myself included, affordable performance is our best case scenario. And sometimes affordable performance has a side of practicality too. Enter the 2022 Hyundai Kona N. Now, before we get any further, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe to the Motor One US YouTube channel and help us grow. You can also follow us and interact with us on social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. This is the third car in Hyundai's N performance lineup. The first came a few years ago, the Veloster N, a legitimate hot hatchback, despite its sort of funky three-door design. And more recently, we have the Elantra N, which is of course a small sedan. Now, both of those two make a lot of sense as performance cars, but this? This is a really small crossover. It's a weird car for Hyundai to decide, yep, this is the next one that we want to go fast. The only other thing I can think of that is even remotely like the Kona N is the Mercedes GLA 45 AMG, and that is quite a bit more expensive. So really, the Kona N is somewhat in a league of its own. But like the other two N cars, Hyundai has gone out of its way to make this look the part. The Kona rocks the split lighting design at the front. That means the headlights are actually tucked down here, the triple beam LED headlights. Up here is just a running light. It also functions as your turn signal. I can't say it looks the best, but you know what? BMW is getting into this. We have the first generation Jeep Cherokee that started it. It's a trend that I don't think is going away. The grill is actually pretty restrained, at least compared to the Elantra N with all of its different directions. There's a neat little end badge tucked here in the corner and around the entire perimeter of the car is a thin red strip. Honestly, the only thing that I don't like in this entire situation are these three vents right here. They're not functional. If this is a performance car, a hot hatch, you want everything to at least be functional. Now from this angle, you could argue that it looks the most traditional crossover, although Hyundai has done a bunch to make the Kona N different from the standard Kona. Right here, they got rid of that dark gray body cladding that we see on the other Kona models, and instead they made everything color matching, which is definitely my preference and shows that not every crossover has to have crazy body cladding on it. These wheels are just fantastic. This design is my favorite out of all the different end cars we've seen so far. And it does a good job of showing off the nice red brake calipers just behind. The tires are sort of interesting. This is a P0 Pirelli tire. The Elantra N, for example, uses a Michelin PS4S. So although the tire sizes are similar, they went with different manufacturers. Overall, the ride height on the Kona N is slightly higher than the standard Kona 2, which is interesting. You'd think it'd be lower for the more aggressive model. But come on with me to the back of the car because things here are a bit more lively too. Now this is really where Hyundai dialed up the design volume. I mean, this is a compact crossover. Just look at it. There's a huge spoiler on the back, a massive diffuser underneath, end badges over here in the corner. And then of course, because this benefits from the recent facelift that the Kona got, you get more intricate LED designs in the taillights and then the reverse lights down here. But look at these exhausts. Any enthusiast who's ever loved a hot hatchback in their life will admire these exhausts. And I'm not going to hide it from you any longer. This is what it sounds like. The inside of the Kona N is a lot like a regular Kona, to be honest with you. A little bit too much, in my opinion. They could have gone through some more steps to make this feel more elevated than the rest of the Kona lineup. There are a few specific N touches. You have N logos in the seats themselves, this cool blue contrasting stitching, which we've come to know with different N vehicles. Um, but for the most part, it's just a lot of the same black plastic. I know that this is an affordable performance car. You can't expect super premium things, but just anything to break up the sea of the same materials would be nice. Now this is where things do get more exciting on the steering wheel. The wheel itself is actually different than the standard Kona, but it has these different buttons on it. Now, oddly, they're both branded N, so immediately you don't know what they are, but the one on the left takes you through all the drive modes. You can actually hear the exhaust change. Eco, normal, sport, and then snow. The N mode on the right has two presets. So there's the N mode itself, which is full everything, engine, steering, suspension, all of that. Then there's actually a custom mode, which is what we're going to use to drive in N mode. And everything is configurable. So in our case, I'll leave it all dialed completely up except for the suspension. I'm gonna leave it normal and I'll tell you why in just a second. Amazing road like this and a car like this, pretty good day. Let me tell you what makes the Kona N such a little pocket rocket. 
It starts with what's under the hood. It's a turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine, making 276 horsepower and 289 pound feet of torque. There's also a little red button here called NGS or N Grin Shift, and that is Overboost. So you press that button and you get 20 seconds with 10 more horsepower and the car goes to its most amped up setting. If you don't want it all at once, you just hit NGS one more time and it'll save you the rest of that time for later on. Eventually it'll reset and you get the full 20 seconds again. There's only one transmission option. It's an eight speed dual clutch. So unlike the Elantra and the Veloster, no manual available in this. Hyundai says because it's a crossover, nobody's gonna go for the manual anyway, so deal with the DCT. And I'm just fine doing that because even in the other cars, I prefer this automatic to the manual. It's quick, it's snappy in all settings. It really never misbehaves. It's a perfect transmission to go with this engine, which is just brimming with character. And I don't even mean just the fun poppy exhaust. I mean, the engine itself, there's a lot of lag, but once the boost hits, it's super linear and just builds with excitement. It's a great little four cylinder. There's no all wheel drive option available on Kona and it's only power to the front wheels, again, just like Elantra and Veloster. But that's not a problem to me. Most good hot hatchbacks are front wheel drive based. And although this car is bigger and taller than some of those others, it handles itself with a lot of poise. The Kona N has unique dampers, springs, its own front axle and anti-roll bar. So there's a lot of hardware up there to make it behave in corners. You can induce understeer if you push hard enough, but I have to say, the grip levels are way higher than I expected them to be. The brakes are maybe missing a little bit of overall performance. Once they start heating up, you lose just a bit of feel. They're not as consistent as the Brembo's that you would get in a Civic Type R, for example, although that car is a little bit more expensive. Let's not talk about all that. Let's focus on my favorite thing about the entire experience, oddly enough, the steering feel. I know, weird, right? But even in normal mode, there's just the right amount of weight and it's always communicating what the front wheels are doing. You feel completely aligned with what the car wants to do at all times. And when you get it into sport and end modes, it adds even more weight so you feel out the corner. It's just fantastic. I mean, I'm the first to admit I love a Volkswagen GTI on a canyon road like this, but this steering is far better than a Mark 8. Now, all of that good has to be weighed against just a little bit of bad. There are two compromises, two big compromises that you'll have to deal with in the Kona N. The first is the big one, the suspension. Even in its softest setting, these adaptive dampers are tough. Now, I don't know if it's because the wheelbase is shorter than on the Elantra N or because the Kona rides on an older platform, but man, is this thing unforgiving. When, you know, we've been driving it around town all week and anything in the road, it lets you feel it. To borrow a word from our friends in Formula One, it actually starts to porpoise too. Once you hit bumps at speed, the car gets unsettled. There's just too much vertical motion in the suspension and the whole thing becomes unsettled because of it. Second compromise is fuel economy. The EPA rates this at 20 miles to the gallon combined, but over five days now, we've done actually less than 18. I'm looking at it, 17 and change. When you look at other fast hatchbacks, like the GTI again, that gets 28 miles to the gallon combined. So there's quite a bit of sacrifice there when it comes to overall fuel efficiency. And with only a 13 gallon tank, you're gonna be filling up more often than you want. Whether or not those compromises are worth it are up to you. Personally, I would say yes, especially considering there's not really another direct competitor to this car. If you want something that's more practical than a Veloster, that looks better than an Elantra, this might be the perfect end car for you.